was with the Father and which was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye may have fellowship with us. And our truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy might be filled. You know, he wants to fill us with his spirit and his joy and his peace and his love. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We can get all that darkness out of our life and shine that bright light. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and that's what we're having now. Fellowship, praise and singing, testimonies, giving him glory, and thanking him for what he's done within each and every one of our lives. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And also the washing of the water of his word. It also, because he comes as a refiner's fire and full of soap to do the will of the Father. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. And, and we know that there is a sinner that is born in every man. But thank God that he is born a son that has power and has power over the sinner and will destroy him eventually. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, as I see those thoughts that I know aren't godly and aren't of the Lord. I'm, I'm asking them, now Lord, bind that up. That's not you. I don't want to hear that from this carnal mind. Shut that thing down. And, and just get, let me think the thoughts that you want me to think. Because all your thoughts are, are good and for the good of mankind and for the blessings of all. If we say we have not sinned, we make him alive and his word is not in us. And that's thing, one thing for sure. We all, all have sinned and for sure of the glory of God. We're born sinners into this world. But thank God, he has sent a Savior. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. And it's, it's, it's a message that, that God sent to the church of Philadelphia. You know, I believe not only in every generation, but in every place that the Spirit of the Lord is. It was seven churches that, that, that John described that were... Uh, the churches that are in Revelations and, and, and the things that that those churches uh, the state or status those churches were in through the power of God and this church of Philadelphia I believe is a church that that uh, this body of Christ would, would, is represented that God has done this for us as a body and I just want to start Revelation 3rd chapter 7th verse and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. And I know God has opened up doors in each and every one of our lives to bring us into a relationship with him. And not only that, he has sat down and is supping with us and talking and walking and changing and delivering each and every one of us according to his will. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and has not denied my name. And we are constantly holding on and trusting and letting his word hold on to us and bring us into a closer relationship with him. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold it fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write upon him the name of my God, 
in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down from heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, you can hear this, you can believe this, you can trust in this, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. You know, all these things that the Spirit has spoke to the people of God, the Lord has the power to bring those things to pass if we trust and believe in him and let him work these things out in our lives. Let's go to 1 John. I want to go, this is 1 John. I want to go to the 5th chapter. 1 John, 5th chapter. First verse. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous unto us. In other words, we stop worrying and start being concerned about how when we have to take this extra step or do something that God commanded us to do that is not a burden anymore. You know, I look at now praising and thanking God and giving him the glory and the honor that so richly deserves. It's not a burden to me. I love doing this. I love giving him the glory. I love thanking him. I love when one of the brothers and sister calls me and starts talking about Jesus and what Jesus has done and is doing in their life. I just love to hear and see Jesus move in the midst of the people. It's not a burden anymore. It's not a problem or somebody has a need. Let me get, get if God has provided, I want to make sure they get it and how and that the Lord blesses them because he has provided for his people. And it's another thing that I can lift him up and praise him and thank him for, for just being in the midst of his people. Verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. To start, to come in, it's another thing that I never forget Brother Will ministered years ago, coming in to the faith of Jesus Christ. All these things are available to the believer. But you know what? Because most people have not made these sacrifices, given up their life to receive them and minister them, they never grow into them. But for those wayfaring ones, those ones that the God has called and done things in their life, that they can believe that no one else has done them but God, everything in this book that he has blessed us with, that he has made promises, blessings, and benefits in, he will bring to pass according to their belief. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. You know, Jesus is the only way to become a conqueror or overcomer, because he's the only one that has conquered and overcame the world. Well, we have to die to ourselves so that we might live by his spirit. You know, he said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. And you know, he'll provide that cheer for you because he has overcome the world. He's greater than everything out there. And he's got the ability to show that to you and even how he has come. Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. The spirit is undeniable because it comes into your life and does in your personal life things that nobody else can do. You can be alone and not be lonely. You can have all kinds of things going on around you. All kinds of trials and tribulations and have peace in your soul. You can be unloved, hated, and 
well as others. Man can't do that. Only Jesus can do that. And when you feel his spirit in your life, you know nobody, nobody came into you to give you that attitude, that divine nature that can come only from God. You know, I was listening to this Jewish lady a few, week, a few weeks ago. She got in my face and said, you are disgusting. Nothing inside of me moved. I said, thank you, Jesus. Because her opinion of me don't mean nothing. The only thing that means something to me is you. And then see his hands start moving. This one guy gets up and he wants to call a meeting. He starts, he has a meeting. He starts, but they were trying to do some things. I'm not going to go into all the detail of it and everything. But it's just beautiful to, to know when you obey God, when you, when you react like he wants you to react. See, flesh says, you say something like that to me, I'm going to But the spirit says, I'm going to hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battles. And you start seeing him moving all around. They had a meeting, sat down. And all of a sudden, the Lord, the Lord, peace is coming to the building. Told God the other day, that meeting you gave, it brought a whole lot of peace in here. Calmed a lot of things down. You know, I was fine. Because you know what? What comes out of a man's mouth don't mean nothing to me. It's what comes out of this book that's important to me. Because a man can't change nothing. This Bible can change everything in your life and put you on a course that only God can give you right into his kingdom. With power and authority. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. I'm so glad you can fill us with the Spirit. I'm so glad he gave us the word of God that we can read and know what God said and that it can be interpreted and digested in our spirit and we can be, it can be manifested in our lives. And I'm so glad for his precious blood that he covers us with so God doesn't even see us and at the same time can dissolve us so that we might come into that relationship with him. If we receive witnesses of men, the witness of God is greater for the witness of God which he has testified of his son. And we know that testimony is true because he's doing the things he promised in his word in our lives. So we can agree with him that he is Lord and he can do everything he promised. He that believeth on the son of God has a witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son hath not life. Jesus promised us the abundant life that only he possesses, that we can grow into it. And know him and his power. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter. And I want to go to the first chapter. And I want to go to the 16th verse. The Second Peter, first chapter, 16th verse. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You know, they saw what he received from glory. And we can see what he's doing in our lives to bring us in to glory. Verse 17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice unto him from excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And we also have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed 
as into a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. God says what he means and can do exactly what he says. He just needs somebody to believe it and trust in it. And he will give you the peace that passes all understanding. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost will move you. We saw that earlier today. As the spirit of the true and living God moved in the midst of his people and started to touch hearts and minds and break powers that might have been holding us back and keeping us from praising, thanking him that he so richly deserved. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. And I want to go to the first chapter. And I want to start at the 13th verse. 1 Peter. First chapter, 13th verse. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When, you, when it is revealed in your life, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Savior that has manifested his self in your life, that has the power to tear down everything that the enemy has built up in you and around you and give you the blessings of the Holy Ghost, the fruit, the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit, and even the divine nature of God. Verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And he's not talking about the conversation of your lips, but the life that you're living. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, past the time of your soul joining here in fear, for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, lifestyle, received by your traditions of your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do you believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, what God wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead. Every day, God, as he is in heaven, right now, as the angels fall down and cry, holy, 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 and they get up and see something brand new that they never saw before throughout eons, time that we can't even measure. God can wake you up and show you every single day him and his power moving in the midst of the earth in the hearts and the minds of his people. Verse 22, seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Jesus, the word of God that is coming to our lives, that we might have that love one towards another, that, 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 that we might wake up in the middle of the night, or we might be in our work working, or doing yeah. about our business and things that we're doing, and, and we think about our brother or our sister, somebody that is calling out unto God and asking him to help them, and just say, Lord, help them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Lift them powers off them, Lord. Break them binds out of their life, Lord. Yes. And know that God, through Jesus Christ, is able to do it. Let's go to James. The book of James. And I want to go to the first chapter. 
And I want to start at the 19th verse. And it says, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. You know, godly advice is a very good thing. We just need to heed it so that God can direct our path so we don't step into the potholes and the snares and the pits that the enemy has waiting for us. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. This word that we are reading, that we are believing, that we are trusting in, has the power to bring a relationship with Jesus that no one else can do. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Let the Lord come in and do the word. You'll see, in every instance, you can't change nothing. But you have the one that can change all things according to his word. So trust in him. What he said, he can do to those and for those that believe him. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, gotta keep on going. Jesus said, continue in my word, continue in my love, continue following me. Being he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. And Jesus told him what the work is. The work is believing on him who God has sent. Believe what Jesus said. Believe what's in this Bible. Believe all the good promises, all the good blessings, all the good deliverances that he made because they are for the believer. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, and this man shall be blessed in his deeds. And everything that you do, God will bless you in your doing. And he will show that he's in your life. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 14th verse. 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 14th verse. Of these things, put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive about words of no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Be so to speak, so to rise, quick to hear. And then when the Lord speaks to you, speak what he said. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And as you listen and hear, you hear a whole lot of wrongly dividing the word of truth because they have a tendency to take away the power of God and the blessings of God and the things God wants to give mankind to those that accept his word as he has written it and obey it. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, so Luke, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start at the 16th verse. And we got just a couple more and we're going to close, uh, end up here. That's Luke, 4th chapter, 16th verse. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, 
and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And every time that we read it, this scripture can be fulfilled in our ears and in our hearts. Because the same one that performed those things back then is in the world to perform those things in our lives. And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious word which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever you heard done in Capernaum, do ye also in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, when great famine throughout all the land, but unto none of them was, and I think talking about Elijah here, uh, sent, save Sapphira, as the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were, were in Israel in the time of Elsha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they that were in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. You know, it's amazing how the flesh reacts to the things of the spirit, because the flesh wars against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. You know, that's one of the things you can, you have a desire to even sit and hear God's word. The spirit of the Lord is dwelling in you. The spirit of the Lord has been a part of your life because flesh can't hear the things that God says because it be sense time. Because its pleasure is in all of the things that it's locked into. But the pleasure of the spirit is with the word of God and with the things that God can do for the believer and what he has done. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill where the city was built that they might cast him headlong. But him, but he passing through the midst of them went his way and came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and took them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power, and his word is still with power, and it gains even more power. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, where he describes his word and the power that it has for those that accept it and believe it as he has said it. That's Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And I want to go to the 16th, the 12th, I'm sorry, the 12th verse. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit. He can cut away that unclean spirit and power that has controlled our lives for so long and set free our souls and of the joint and marrow in a desire of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He's able to put down the carnal mind that cannot and doesn't have, even indeed is at enmity with God, but that mind of Christ, which is obedient to God, he can get it, make it grow stronger. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. He sees everything, everyone, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. And I just want to go to the last scripture. And that is St. John, 7th chapter. 7th chapter in the 60th. St. John, 7th chapter.
I'm sorry, the St. John, the sixth chapter, and it is the 63rd verse. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit in nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Every time you open up this Bible, this book, God, through Jesus, is speaking to you, telling you things that he can and will do to those that believe. And also the gifts, the promises, and all the blessings that he will pour out in your life. And those precious fruits of the Spirit that can give you the peace, love, and joy that only he possesses. And that can sustain you through all the situations of this world. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some honor. Let's give him thanksgiving for treating us this morning, blessing us with his word, with his songs, with his testimonies and with his word. And Brother Arthur, would you close this out with a word of prayer? Jesus, we thank you today, Lord, for stirring up your body by your spirit. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Ghost to move on the congregation to bless the people, Lord. Father God, to let your spirit go through us, Lord. Cover us. Fill us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. And bless us, Lord. We thank you for this day, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know you reign supreme. And, Lord, you are God. And, and there's none that's besides you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the songs, the testimonies. Lord, we thank you for being who you are and being so gracious to us, Lord. Thank you for saving our souls and blessing us and calling us at a time like this. We just thank you, Lord, that you set this day aside for us and bless your people, Lord. And we so we're going to just going to praise you and thank you and glorify you because you're worthy of all the praise. And we're going to bless you and thank you. Thank you. We thank you for all these things. Let everyone say amen. amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. amen. Jesus did it all by himself. Thank thank God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus, the Savior. And we're going to ask you. We're going to go around now. Love you guys. Have a good day. Continue in prayer one to another. And we're going to ask anybody to uh, feel the need for prayer. And uh, does anyone want to take a minute? Praise God. You said, remember me. You know. He wants us to have him in, in our thoughts. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And amen. We just thank God. You know, he said, suffer a little children. You know, because the children, you know, I was growing up, we, they read the Bible in the church. So, they read the Bible in the, in the church, in the school every day. They don't do that. And you're reading it, aren't you? God bless you. <laughs> well, you keep trusting God. Let me pray for you, George. In the name of Jesus, Father God, be with the protect of our children, Lord, and fill her heart with the spirit of the Lord. She might know that she's got a godly woman that loves her and that has told her about the goodness of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray your protection over our brother and everything because our brothers are, are being slaughtered like dogs. But thank God he sent a savior that can watch. It is crazy. It's sad. Yes. It's sad. But you know what? God's son is saved. Yes. And you know what you can accept it. And you know what he's going to honor that. And he's going to bless you right now in the name of Jesus. And he's going to watch over your children. He's going to keep you and bless you. And give you a more point of life. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So, we thank God for everything that he's done. Jesus suffered a little too. I'm beginning to learn to have my plans last night. <laughs> you know, I, I never realized what it was like raising children until my grands came around. I got a, I got a new respect for you ladies, believe me. I never knew it. I, it was five of them in our house. But see, I was up early in the morning, go out to work, and when I came back, everybody was asleep. But I ain't never know what it's like. They, they was, my grands is two or three of them this time. But, whew, 
I got, I got, I got respect to y'all. Thank God for you. And I, I realized that word is true. He said, you are to say in childbearing. Ain't God real? Oh my goodness. Because you know what? The first taste of the Lord with nine, it always comes out of the mouth. Just about every single time. He said, this is my body. Let's remember him and all the things he's done for us. And what he's still doing for us. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take, eat the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the blood that was shed for you, rich on your sins. Drink the blood that cleanses us from all sins. And be in prayer one for another that Amen. he might strengthen us and keep us and protect us. Amen. And bring us through whatever we have to go through. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Thank God for each and every one of you.